Okay, welcome everybody. It's so great to see so many of you here, or so many of your names here at least. Um, thank you so much for being with us tonight. I always love to see our friendly faces of some of our teachers who are here to support their colleague tonight, so it's great to see you also. Um, I'm just here to say welcome and to really thank um, Ellie Sheva Levitt for putting this presentation together um, with all of the myriad of things that she has to do. And she really is, feels very dedicated to making sure that the parents uh, get the most out of the school year generally and the most out of this communication tool. So she has volunteered um, right from the beginning to do this and I'm very appreciative of that. So thank you very much, Ellie Sheva. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Susie. I have to apologize in advance. My voice is not at its best. My dad's response was, it's the beginning of school. Of course you have no voice. Apparently this happens to me every year and I forget every year. Um, so I will do my very best to try and breathe and talk and get words out and for you to understand. Thank you so much for coming and uh, giving me a nice audience. Feel free to turn on your camera if you want or not. Um, I was introduced to Seesaw a number of years ago before I even lived here in Silver Spring um, in my previous school. And I heard it and I heard it was nice and people started raving about it, but I didn't really have the time to dedicate to really looking into it. And my school was not committed to it at that point. Came to Berman and I threw myself into Seesaw World. And I'll be honest, it's taken me a good two years to really love it. I feel like I used it fairly well the first year even better last year and this year I'm like all oh, full on. I love it. I think it's fabulous. I think it, sorry, it allows for communication in a way where it's very not disruptive to the family, to the children. For the children, it's super fun. We'll talk about that. Um, but I think what I'm, tr what I'm hoping to deliver to you is the idea that it's a wonderful view into your child's classroom. It means that if you're curious, and of course teachers hope that you are, as to what goes on, either on a daily basis or even every few days, this is a really wonderful way to see those things. It can be super intrusive if you want, and you can have it dinging and popping up every two seconds when we post something, or you can do it in a bit more of a human way and have things only come once a day in a digest, and we'll talk about all those things later. But the point is, Seesaw is there, mostly as a tool for teachers to interact with the children, but really it's a triangle because we really want the parents to interact as much with it as we do. Um, I'm gonna show you, my hope is to show you how to interact with it in a way where it's actually engaging your child with you. So it's not just seeing what they wrote or hearing their recordings, or looking at photographs, but it's even responding and reacting to them. So I'm gonna share some slides with some benefits and just explanations about Seesaw. But then what I'd like to do at the end before questions is go into Seesaw as a parent. I created a fake student, um, they're fake parents, because my children are middle school, so they're not on Seesaw. And I just wanted to make sure that from the technical end of things, everyone feels comfortable and able to use it in the most effective way. So bear with me as I pull up my screen here. Um, I hope to give you as comprehensive um, an idea of what Seesaw really is all about as I can, but please either type up questions in the chat or you can jot down questions to ask live. Uh, we're not a giant crowd, so I'm very happy for people to unmute and sort of just call out questions as well. All right, so first I'd like to, I just wanna share with you a video that Cecil produced that gives a really nice overview of what Cecil is all about. Just give me a thumbs up that you hear it when it starts, please. Welcome to Seesaw. Seesaw is a portfolio that your student will use to showcase what they're learning and doing at school and share that with you, their family. They'll add photos, videos, drawings, voice recordings, notes, and much more to their learning journal. And you'll be able to see their amazing work right on your phone or computer whenever they post something new. Students love Seesaw because they're able to show what they know with lots of different tools and share their work with meaningful audiences, all while practicing those super important 21st century skills. 
Teachers love Seesaw because they're able to gain insights from all of their students, see student growth, and have all that classwork organized in one place. Parents love Seesaw because they can be closer to the classroom without being there every day and really understand how their student is doing. Teachers and parents are always in control of how student information is shared. Once you've connected to your child's account using the special invite code or link from your child's teacher, you can view all of their posted work. You'll only see your own child's work and messages that your teacher sends home. When something new is added, you'll get a notification. You can decide if you want notifications via email, push, or text message. Notifications can come each time something new is added or just once a day. You choose the settings you prefer. Once you follow the Seesaw notification, you can see what's going on in the classroom in real time. Teachers can also turn on options for you to like and comment on your child's work to encourage their learning. Remember, the best comments help us learn something new. Things like, wow, you did a great job because, have you considered? Interesting, this made me think of, I'm proud of you because, are great conversation starters. We're all learning together how to communicate and be our best selves online. You can leave a text comment or even a voice comment. Voice comments are perfect for younger learners. Seesaw takes your and your child's privacy seriously. We understand that you're trusting us to protect your child's information, and we promise to provide a service that keeps students safe. You can learn more on our website at web.seesaw.me slash privacy. Your participation in your child's learning is considered interesting. This may Of course, I forgot to unmute myself. Classic mistake everyone makes. Um, one mistake, sorry. One of the most accurate predictors of student success is the extent which families are involved in their child's learning and support at home. I really believe, and I see it as a teacher myself. When your child gets feedback from you or from me as a teacher in what they're learning, it only makes them want to do more and want to strive higher. So one of the most amazing things about Seesaw is the feedback. The feedback piece is incredible, both from the student's perspective, the teacher giving feedback, and I'll talk about how we do that in a couple of seconds, and the parent feedback in return. Now, as they said in the video, feedback for younger ones is a little tricky when you type it up and they're not quite reading yet. Don't worry, we're working on that in first grade. Um, you can voice record your feedback, which is so great. One thing I learned last year when we went virtual, and someone had mentioned to me, it was so true, if you give verbal, if I, the teacher, give verbal feedback using my voice, it connects the children to the teacher even more. It makes us, they love hearing our voices. If they heard a nice voice message from mom or dad, oh my gosh, they'll go mad. They'll go crazy in a good way. They would love that. So CISO enables those kind of feedbacks. Now, why, why was this created to become something that would be health, helpful for families? because it's very hard to keep track of your kids. It's hard to follow every single child's progress, learning. You might have other children to take care of. The language differences, which CISO actually has multiple languages available, and your work schedule. You could be working night shift and have no time during the day when you're sleeping it off to look at CISO. So CISO works on your schedule. You can look at it at two o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the afternoon, first thing in the morning, Whenever you want, that's entirely up to you. It's very flexible. Now, CISO has many, many benefits. It's basically a digital portfolio that shows a child's work step by step. What's amazing about it is that you can look at the work over years. Now, someone asked the question in the questionnaire, how do I erase previous year's work? So I only see this year. The honest truth is you're not really you shouldn't really want to, because what you can do, what's beautiful about it, is you watch that progress your child has made from when they started all the way till now. You're only going to see the latest work anyway, so the previous work won't get in the way, but it's an amazing thing. As a teacher, I have, I can look by calendar on Seesaw 
I do writing samples and I can see, look how Johnny wrote in September. And then I can see how Johnny wrote in October, November, December, and I can watch that progress in Seesaw. It's incredible. It's the spelling that changes. It's the handwriting. It's the response. It's the length of the response, the sentences, so many things that we're looking at that helps us as a teacher watch progress. You as a parent can watch the same progress. It's very student friendly. It's very teacher friendly, very parent friendly. It seems like a lot to learn. I promise you it's not. Once you get the hang of it, it's really very simple. You can be as fancy as you want with it. You can be creative with it. But at the very minimum, it can just be a really nice portfolio. Look what your child can do. And for you to say, oh my gosh, honey, I'm so proud of you. I love the way you recorded your voice and read those words. I love the way you drew that picture for me or the way you answered the question to the journal. It's fabulous for that. Now, another interesting thing you can do, I don't know if you know this, but we can add extra people who are willing, who would, might be interested to participate. For example, last year, I had a grandparent who was on Seesaw. She's super engaged in her child, grandchild's life. She wanted to see the work. So the family invited her to join and they could do that. I will show you how to do that. If you'd like grandparents to join in, aunts and uncles, cousins, I think you're allowed up to 10. So you're welcome to invite, grandparents might get a lot of nachla from that, just seeing what their grandchildren are doing. And I had their grandparent writing comments, which for the child was so exciting. For the teachers, like I said, it really helps us track, especially now in Zoom school land, we want to keep track of what they're doing. It's very, very hard when I say to a child, honey, hold up your, hold up your book to the camera. Let me see your work. I, if the light is shining in the right general direction, I might see a few words. Instead, what I've been doing with first grade and second and third, no, already how, I've been training them how to take a picture of their work and how to post on Seesaw. We've been in school one week. All 34 of my students can do this now. We've been working at it every day. I've shown them how to take a picture where I can see the whole thing. That took a while. But I can see the work and I can say, I can even mark it up. I can underline whether it was supposed to be, if it's uppercase, I can mark it that's supposed to be lowercase. I can write a comment, I can draw a picture on it. I can add things to their work. Not only by recording my voice, I can draw a big smiley face on their work and really give constant feedback. One of the things I've been doing a lot is sharing my screen, letting the kids watch when I get their work. So they see, oh my gosh, you just got mine. And then I write a comment and I say, look for the comments and they go mad. They love it. They, they just get so excited about it. So it's very responsive. It's very interactive and the kids feel really good about it. Now for the parents, you may wonder like, oh, another thing I have to, have to do. Another thing to keep track of. But honestly, like, I think it's, if at, at minimum, it's really a nice conversation for the dinner table or even less than that for Shabbos, right? Shabbat table. Oh, honey, I saw that you learned all about zebras. Tell me what you know. Or I saw in your journal, you made a really nice wish for the family for Shana. Let's talk about it. Like there's so many things. If you bring up those little pieces, the connection it makes with the children is priceless. It's safe in terms of um, internet safety. It's safely done. You're welcome to look into the safety you know, on the website. It's creative. There's typing, there's drawing, there's painting. There's taking pictures, there's taking videos, voice recording. You know, if a Chumash teacher wants to hear the kid read a Pasuk, easy peasy. If I want a kid to read short A words like they did today, this morning, they recorded themselves, just their voice. Then they heard themselves. They went nuts again in a good way. So it's really, it's, it's really creative. It's great. Each child has their own journal and you will only see your children's journals. If you have one, two, however many, you'll see just those children, no one else. I see everyone's, of course. It opens up the walls of our classroom, especially now when things are atypical. And please God, once we're back in the building, things should be normal and straightforward, but there's a strong chance we'll be in and out, you never know. This is gonna be an immediate switch for us. We're gonna use this a lot to keep things flowing. We use this daily and it really flows the learning. Um, and mostly communication. Now, the one thing I'll say 
if there's a communication that is, pertains to your child specifically, that's of great importance, they're struggling, there's a behavior issue, whatever it is, we're not going to communicate through CISO about that. This is a fun, you know, by the way, wear a blue shirt to school tomorrow type of communication. More serious communication is going to come from email or phone call. Okay, so just FYI, this is more like, look at the amazing learning your child has done. Look at the writing they did. Wear a blue shirt for, you know, Israel Day tomorrow, that kind of thing. Children do their best work when they get positive feedback from both home and school. As I mentioned before, if you bring up to your children the work that they did in school, first they're going to be like, whoa, how did you know that? But then they'll realize, like, it's a triangle of communication. And that is the teacher's dream. I feel like this is my 19th year teaching, 150th year of first grade. And over the years, it's evolved. Like parents are, have generally been very not involved. And this is a great issue. But now with Seesaw, I love that the parents are involved. I love that they want to know what the children are learning. And I love that I can share everything. So what we're going to do right now is look at the parent portal. I want to show you practical application and how to use the different parts of it. Okay, so I pretend I, I created my daughter's Sarah Cohen, very generic. Um, I even found a fake picture for her. Um, and I want to show you. So when you log in as family, this is what you're going to see. Now, I really do recommend that you um, get the app if you can, because it just makes it much, much easier. It's on your fingertips and it's right there. I'm showing to you on the, on the computer. I suspect it will look a little different on the phone, but the functions should be basically the same. Um, you can have Android and, and iPhone, doesn't matter what phone you have. Um, you're going to have home, okay, which is going to be your child's journal. It's going to be everything that your child has, every communication, every picture. So I just created some fake work for Sarah and I wanted to show you Okay, so here, the teacher wrote a note to Sarah. Welcome to first grade. We're so excited for you to be in our class. And then I wrote, as a mom, Sarah is so excited too. Sarah's going to see that comment. And I, as the teacher, I know it's confusing because it's both my name. I love the com I love Sarah's picture, uh, Sarah's comment. So, again, that interaction back and forth, so easy. You just click on comment, type your comment, and then post it. Now, if you wanted to record your comments, I'm just seeing actually the parents can't record their comments. I thought you could. Maybe that's just a teacher thing. Oh, no, you can. Never mind. To record a comment, you look at the microphone, you click on it, click on this record, and just record what you want to say. Amazing job, sweetheart. I'm so proud of you, whatever it is. Let me just, right? You press it, record your comment, done. And then you press that green check button. Now that green check button is our magic button in first in, in Seesaw. Everything that's ever submitted has to be done with a green check for the children, especially. If they don't press it, the work doesn't get to us. So now Sarah, and you can see that there is a comment here by her mom that she recorded. Um, here is just pretend picture of the journal. Again, mom wrote, nice work, Sarah. And Sarah gets that connection that, Reassurance that mom is very impressed with her work. Here's a little coloring that she did. This was an activity that the teacher gave her to do. She did it in school and mom now gets to see it. Again, you can write comments. If not, that's entirely up to you. Now you don't have to comment every single thing, of course. We all get life is busy, it's true. But once in a while, it really is a nice thing. I'm teaching the children in my class how to look for the comments. Now the journal specifically, what's gonna happen when you click on journals, it's gonna have a list of all your children. If you have a number of children, it's gonna tell, tell you, gonna give you the names of all of them. You might wanna click on Sarah because you wanna see Sarah's work. Click on, that's her class. And then again, it's gonna show you Sarah's specifically, her specific work, okay? Now someone asked a really smart question. Let's say, I love this picture of Sarah and I really want to keep it for myself. Someone asked me, how do you keep it without copying every single picture in general? Here's your magic button. These three dots give you all sorts of functions. I can print the picture. I can get a QR code for it to send it to grandma. 
I can share it to someone. I can save it on my computer and print, print it later. So just a nice added thing. You want to also print up a journal piece? You can do that. Same thing. Those three dots are also magic for us in school. I use them to write on the kids' work. Um, I use them to get rid of things, to change things, to redo things. But those three buttons are your best friend. You want to use those when you're trying to get stuff and to share and save and all that. Now the inbox, that's going to be any communication that comes from the teacher and your place to respond. Um, again, I don't think you're going to use this for uh, Sarah, you know, had a fight with a friend yesterday and I really wanted to discuss it with you situation. But if I write, you know, tomorrow wear blue and white and I didn't write that blue was the shirt, you might write back, was that the shirt that was blue? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this can be back and forth. Um, the journal is very, very simple. That's really the main thing. Home is going to be everyone. The journal will be by child and the inbox is messages from the teachers. All right. Um, and so in general, um, I just wanted to just in closing, I know we have lots of time still, but I want to leave room for questions because I'm sure I'm forgetting something. Um, Seesaw is a, a big piece of our learning right now. It's allowing us to listen to what the children are doing, to watch, to listen, to check on. We as the teachers are using it because it's an important tool for us to give feedback and to keep track. It's the easiest way for us to keep track of what they're doing instead of having you take a picture and emailing it to us. So, um, oh yeah, I'm gonna show you how to add grandparents. I forgot to do that, I'm so sorry. Um, so, um, I really think that if you allow yourself the time to at least look at the seesaw once in a while, give your child that feedback, that would be really um, very meaningful. I think it would really go a long way. Now, I believe if I, yes, I think if I go here, bear with me for a second. I think it might be account settings. Let me just see. Um, I think I'm trying to see where it is. Um, channel, hang on. I'm trying to remember. Ariane Levine, can you unmute and help me? <laughs> do I, do we do as, oh, you can, I have to unmute you. There you go. Unmute. Hi. So you can't do it from the parent side. The teacher oh. can send the code to the parent and then the parent can then give that code to anyone that they want. And Ellie Shev is right. You can have up to 10 people. So the piece of paper that came home in your child's folder, that family code, if you still have it, you can take a picture of it, email it to grandma and grandpa if they live far away. If you don't <laughs> still have it, just ask the teacher and we can very easily get it to you again. And one other thing, Ellie Shev, when you mentioned about the um, the inbox and being able to talk back and forth. I just want yep. you to know that when the teacher sends an email or a message that way, when you respond, the teacher is the only one that sees your response. So even though the teacher sends the message to the whole class, wear blue and white tomorrow, if you have a question and you're a little nervous, is it a silly question or not? The only person that can see your response is the teacher. So that's just a little... And Actually, you're reminding me one more thing about that as well. There's two ways to, for us to send information on Seesaw. We can either send a journal, like in their journal, an update that goes to everyone. So let's say we were doing a weekly update on things going on in class. That will come in your digest, whichever way you get it. Either if you get things as we post, or if you get the once a day digest, it will come that way. Now, if I wanted to send you a very important announcement, like there's no homework tonight, then I click on what's called announcement and that's gonna to come to your phone whenever I send it. It's not going to come in the digest because that's something I need you to know immediately. Just FYI. Um, someone asked, oh, printing. So here's an interesting trick. I was trying to play around because someone said, how do I just print one picture or save one picture? Now I think, I could be wrong, but I did a little work on this. If we go to Sarah's picture once again, and I do the three, the three buttons and I press print. 
I could be wrong, but this, I think this will work. Hang on, sorry, it's a little slow. Um, now when you press print, and this is the same with anytime you wanna save things as PDFs instead of printing, you still have to press print, press the print button, and then here it says save as PDF. You could save it as a PDF, you can print it, you can save to Google Drive, and there are more options. So, so if you save it, I believe, as the PDF, just that one picture, I think it will save all of them. Worst case, it saves all the pictures and you just print afterwards. Once it's on your computer, you print the one that you want. I don't know, Ariane, correct me if I'm, correct, if I'm wrong, but I don't believe that there's a way to specifically save one picture without doing it that way. That I think that you're right. The only other thing, if you're on your phone, you can very easily just take a screenshot of that one picture and then it's yours. Um, and it's just that one. Um, so what I try to do, and I think the other teachers as well, is that we post two kinds of pictures. And right now, I feel funny when I post pictures because it's always like lots of Zoom boxes and everyone's doing something in their little window. It's not exactly the kind of pictures I usually post. And people who've been in my class in the last few years know that I usually take very nice pictures. But, um, oh, today, so the thing is, so we post group things where we're gonna send it to everyone. But if I had a picture of just a specific child, for example, this morning, Akiva Blue Shofar, I'm going to post it just to Akiva. So Akiva's parents won't get 500 pictures, they'll get that one picture and they'll be able to print it if they want. So I do try and make sure it's post individually as well as group. Um, let's see, computer specific. If you only have the program, program on your computer, only way to do that, right. So I, I, the saving to the PDF part is probably only computer, but I think Mrs. Levine's right. If you, do, if you have it on your phone, probably the easiest is to take a screenshot. That's just quick. Um, I don't know if the quality is good and better than that, email the teacher and said, oh, love the picture of Sarah. Can you email it to me so I can print it? No teacher's gonna say no to that, hopefully. Um, I posted a comment to my son's work and it says waiting for teacher approval. Oh, very good. So um, yes, we as teachers do have to approve every comment and every work that comes to Seesaw that is submitted. Um, it's just, you know, it's a safety feature. It's, we don't want random posts from random people and we want appropriate posts, obviously. Sometimes the kids, not this is just lately because first grade is excited to take pictures and post. I'm getting pictures of their baby sisters and their elephant stuffy, stuffy and you know of the, the mom's nose and it's lovely but I don't want that in their journal. So I will delete it. I won't approve it because I don't want it to be silly. Does that make sense? Okay perfect. Any other questions? I'm happy to ask, answer well, all and every. No question is a silly question. Feel free to unmute yourself. Oh, so someone, so Sarah said, I just tried on my phone. You can save an individual picture on the phone. Great, perfect. Thank you for trying that. I appreciate that. Um, more questions, anyone else? Any feedback? I'd love to hear what you feel about it. Alicia, if somebody asked a question about if they're supposed to go into their ch the child's um, Seesaw portal since we're in school, there are two different, um, parts to Seesaw. Usually it's just the family side, which is what Elisha was talking about tonight. Since we're doing Zoom school, Seesaw has created home learning codes so that teachers and students can do school with Seesaw while they're at home. And so you don't need to go into your child's classroom Seesaw. That's we're just for your child. We're and we'll the teacher. To do that. So you don't have to worry about that. Your children already know how to do that. They've been doing it since the first few days of school. You just need to worry about the parent side, the family app. So that is the distinction. Right, which you can of course get anytime. If you need more copies of those, um, it's so easy for us as teachers to pull up the codes, send you a copy, easy peasy. It can be um, done very, very quickly and easily. Um, that's one of the things we want the, the kids to be able to use it with ease. Um, in first and second grade, we were very lucky and thankful that the children were able to get their own iPads to take home. Reason being that while they're on Zoom in school, 
I wanted, I as a teacher wanted them to be able to work on the iPad at the same time in real time. So I can see what they're doing and I can immediately see the seesaw coming in, the seesaw work. Um, I didn't want to start dealing with, which we had last year, where the children had to leave Zoom, go do their work, and we hope they came back, which 95% of the time they didn't. So to avoid them leaving and disappearing, we did this way and we are very, I'm very grateful uh, to Susie and Rachel for making it happen. Not a simple feat. Um, and hopefully if you have a child in first and second grade, we're taking good care of our iPads. They're not for fun, they're just for school. So I know it's very tempting, but we don't want anyone to have to replace one. So please take good care of them for us um, and make sure that the ch children remember to charge them. We do try and remind them, but. All right, let's see more questions. Um, okay, I see a question about parent pool versus pool, okay. What does that mean? So the parent portal, the parent end of things is the simplest version of everything, right? That's going to be a summary of what your child has done. Um, hang on one second. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. I really am alive. I just have challenges. Um, so the parent one is the simplest. The classroom and the child ones are more tricky, more complicated, but you don't need to worry about that because we're training them to do that, to be on it successfully. You do not need to worry about like, I'm trying to encourage my parents of my children not to get involved when a child's having difficulty. I want your child to ask me on Zoom and not to run to mommy and say, I need help, I don't know how to do it, I'm stuck. I don't expect you to be able to do it. I want them to, even though I'm on the other side of a screen, I want them to know that I'm there to help them and all the other teachers do as well. The goal is to not disturb you as much as possible. Does that make sense? The only time I ever sent a child to a parent is like, emergency. This is not working. The iPad won't turn on, stuff like that, that I can't really jump through the screen and help with. Um, I just want to add to that, Alicia, I see, and you can definitely, um, you can definitely let us know if you want us to read you the questions out the chat. I know it's hard to manage both. No, um, I wanted to add the, the teachers, just to clarify one more time about the classroom app versus the parent app. The classroom app is the one that the students interact with when we are in live school as well. So when we're in live school, they do work and upload it onto Seesaw. And so what we've done is we've moved that, that app by sending the QR code, we've moved that to their home classroom. But they're doing work in that app and they're uploading it onto the app for the teacher to see. So that's their way of submitting work for the teacher to, um, to see and to grade and to offer feedback on. So that's... Yeah also something that they're used to using from when we are in school, except for our very youngest children, they've used that classroom app in school as well. Correct. It's just a different way of, it's, it's the same goal. It was just a different way of entering the app from the classroom as opposed to at home. Um, so are you supposed to go into the, you don't need to go into the classroom portal while the kids are in Zoom school. Like that, again, that's the teacher's job. When I need your child to go on, this, on Zoom, on, on Seesaw, I'm asking them to do it on their own without any help. Really the only thing the parents, we want the parents to do is look at those digests when they come in just to enjoy and get nachat from it. Um, you know, if, there, if your child is, now I, I get that we don't necessarily see all the frustration that might be going on at your end of things. We know that, we're learning that, we see it. And I know that kids are sort of asking on the side, they think I don't notice, but just keep encouraging them to ask us directly. We really want to help them with this stuff. We know what we're talking about. I often find that when parents get involved, it sometimes complicates things a bit more. Um, we are very, like we're very used to breaking things down step by step, repeating things a thousand times every day, every hour, and we're there to help. Um, okay, let's see if there's any other questions. I don't wanna... Yeah, um, I see that Mr. Galper is asking a question about whether the assignments are being posted to the class CESA list. Are they something that are supposed to be worked on at home oh, or so are they supposed to be printed? Okay, so it's not, right now, as things stand, we are giving the children mostly, it's grade dependent, but for the most part, we're giving them CESA assignments to do in class. There is the turn in time, which is really, it's meant if a child was like not quite done, needed a few minutes to finish and time to turn it in, 
That's what turn in time is made for. But at this moment, we're not giving homework. So all this seesaw work in general is the goal is to do it during class time. Now, eventually, once we go back to school, there will be times we might give them something to do at home after hours. I didn't do much of that for home. I used it much more in the classroom. And I think most teachers use it mostly in the classroom. Um, we still like pen, pen and paper, pencil and paper. You know, as nice as it is to have all the technology, we don't want to lose the authenticity of pencil and paper. So we have learned as teachers to strike a balance between the two. What, what's most advantageous for us right now is the fact that we can check their work because of Cecil. It's just the easiest, smoothest way for us to see that they are doing what they need to be doing. So um, a follow-up to that was, you know, is there a way to notify parents of what assignments they're supposed to be uploading into Seesaw? And are you saying there that you're telling, you're doing that in real time with the kids? Yeah. What about, let's clarify the things that they need to upload maybe that you're doing <coughs> in turn in time? So there's a teacher, yeah. Right, so the truth is, Mrs. Levine, you'll tell me if it's different in third grade, because first grade, right now in first grade, I give them, the, I, I put the assignments on like the night before school, I make it, I can actually put a timer on and ask it to come at a specific time. The time, the, the, hi Nava, the assignment pops in and the children know that they don't you do that assignment until I say, okay, boys and girls, go into the, go into Seesaw, press the light bulb, let's do it, the assignment together. Is that basically the same in third grade, would you say? That's what we do in third grade, yes. If you as a parent, you know, want to check and make sure that your child is doing what they need to do, if you go in through the child's class app and you click on the light bulb, three choices will appear. To do, done, and in progress. And so if you click on the in progress, it's the middle choice, you'll be able to see something that maybe your child hasn't finished. And you can say, oh, were you, you know, are we supposed to go to turn in time today to finish this? And they'll either say yes or no. They might say, no, we're gonna work on that tomorrow in class. And so if you really would like to know, that is the way to do it. But we will tell the children, you know, when things are due and you don't really have to worry so much about it. Yeah, we don't expect you to do that, you know, like, you know, initially, we, we, that's really on us. Um, it could change, but we, you know, for now, that's the way we wanna do things. Um, any other questions? These are great questions. Somebody's asking how they log into Seesaw. So, well, so meaning as a child? As the as, parent. As the parent. So you had, were given, you were sent home a special code, a page that said family code. I forget the, name, the wording exactly. On it, there was a QR code and there was also a letter code in case you don't want to use QR code. Um, and you need to go to seesaw.app app.seesaw.me. It's on the piece of paper, so you don't yes. have to write anything down. And if you Thank don't you. have it, we can give right. it to you again. So just email your teacher, your child's teacher, and say, I need the paper again. We'll send it to you, chick chuck. And it tells you literally step by step. You can't, you, it can't, you can't go wrong with it. It's very, very, very easy to use. And if for some reason it's not easy for you, reach out to me. I'm so happy to help you. Um, so Mrs. Kugler says your teacher will let, let them know if they should head to turn in time. There was a question here about how would you know if your child should go to turn in time? And just for clarification, that's at the end of every school day. And at the moment we have teachers um, manning, what's the <coughs> way of right. saying manning that? Staffing, staffing that room. <laughs> <laughs> There's yes. gotta be a way. Um, staffing that room at 315 every day. There's a teacher there to tell the students what they are supposed to be turning in. Um, and there are often more than one teacher in the room just checking in and saying, yes, you, you turn in that math sheet and you should be also sending us a, an image of your Humash work. So there is somebody there at 3.15 to 3.30. If you have a doubt, please make sure your children attend that and the teachers are taking care of it. Our hope is to transition the children into not needing teachers there at that time and just giving them those 15 minutes to complete anything that was not quite completed, although most things are gonna be done in class, complete whatever they are wrapping up and upload it onto Seesaw for these little guys. What's nice about the turn in time is that right as of now, the, the teachers who are running each one is that grades teacher. So I'm with the Judaics teacher in the first grade one. 
So if a kid comes, I mean, it's nice to hang out with them. We do enjoy that as well, but we will say to them like, you know what, you're good to go, go have fun. Like we'll tell them if they don't need to be there. So they're welcome to pop in. And if you feel like a child just needs to come and say hi, because then say, hey, please let them come say hi. <laughs> we don't mind. Um, but we will, t if we tell them you're good to go and they leave and they come to you and say, my teacher said, I don't need to be there, believe them. We said that. <laughs> Um, we know they're eager to run around and get the energy out. Um, all right, any other questions? These are fabulous questions. Does anyone have any interesting feedback in terms of how you feel about Seesaw? I'm curious in general if people, if there's anyone who really, I don't know if you all want to speak up, but if you dislike it or there's some feedback that you wish we did something a little different with it or we used it in a slightly different way, we, we love feedback. We love hearing from you. Um, it's helpful to us. It's constructive. Oh, you can't unmute. You can't well, unmute. Wanna... Oh, oh, why? Oh, okay, I didn't realize that. Let me just make yeah. you be able to unmute. Sorry. Classic mistake as well. Um, Ivan, I'm going to read Ivan's question while we, yeah. um, if anyone else wants to ask questions, you can put them in the chat or to give feedback, like Elisheva said, you can put them in the chat. Um, Ivan is saying, should we tell them they have to show up? to turn in time. I would like to say that it's a good idea to tell them to turn up. It's like their dismissal of the day. It happens so to be we came today and needed to be there. So it was like- Right, and, right. And while we're staffing it, like I said, we're hoping to have it be more independent soon, but while we're staffing it, I'd like the children to turn up because the teachers sometimes just need to remind them they think they're done, but they're not done. So sometimes it's not deliberate, but they've forgotten about something that they were supposed to turn in. So it's a good idea and we're there anyway. So just let them come in as like a dismissal at kind of an exit ticket. If there's not much to tell them, we'll just let them out quickly. Absolutely. They're on the computer anyway, still from school, right? CISO is fantastic, it helps me keep tabs. I'm happy. I want people to love it as much as I do. <laughs> Maybe I'm too obsessed, I don't know, but it really is. Sometimes I feel like I should post more and share more, but you know, we want to strike a balance, not be over the top either. In England, we call that OTT, maybe here too, but we try not to be OTT about it. Um, really, our goal is not to be annoying. Our goal is to communicate and share and for you to enjoy in return. Um, I saw um, Rebecca asked earlier about saving a picture too, and I know you addressed saving a picture. I have saved pictures before. Someone said they saved on their phone, which is great. I've saved pictures by, you know, however you would save a picture on your computer. For me, it's like two fingers tap on the mouse and then it offers me to save the picture or to copy the picture. And I've been able to do that. Um, so it sounds like on the phone, it's actually super easy even. To on just the phone, see. it's even easier. Yeah. Like hold down the picture and then copy it. Yeah, it might have the box with the arrow when you okay. click on it. Oh, the download. Yeah, I believe. Okay. But um, if you have any trouble with it, you know, reach out. We'll be happy to help. Um, here's hoping we get back to school for photos again. Agreed, Mickey. I really do agree. Um, I'm not asking for saving if I want to put pictures as a command. Is there pictures as a command? Um, what does that mean? I don't I'm understand sure. that question. I'm not sure. Whoever asked it, want, you want to unmute and just... It's, um, it's Rebecca, and I, I think we have to do that for her. I'm okay, uh, can I talk? Yep, yeah, please. Like, I was looking as, at Nathaniel's seesaw post, and he said I was in my cousin's house. If I want to put the picture that he took with his cousin on that, am um, I able to do that or not? I don't think so, although I wonder, Nathaniel could take a picture of it and put it in his journal. Like he it's in his journal. He can, when you click on the three dots, one of the options is to share. And you can then share that photo with family members who are not on Seesaw. Is that what you mean, Rebecca? Or you want, you want to put the picture on his Seesaw so he can show the picture with his cousin, is what you're saying, I think. It's already on Seesaw. He put it there. Oh, okay. So yeah, the three dots, again, your magic three dots, those will give you all the options of what you can do with that picture or posting or anything like that. But that's really another nice reason to add grandparents. Like it's, there's no reason why not, if you think they'll enjoy it. There are multiple languages. You can change the language. And I believe that might be the three dots as well. But if you can't figure that out, be in touch with me. Uh, Levitt E at mjbha.org. I'm always happy. Mrs. Levi, Mrs. Kuga, we're all happy to answer the questions. 
as they come up, Mr. Becker as well, um, because we just, we, our goal is to make you engage with it. So anything we can do to make that easy and make you want to, let us know, please. Um, I wanna give Mrs. Green um, a few minutes just to get ready. Um, but please, please, please reach out. I want to hear from you if you need help. I hope I was able to show you how fun it is. Thank you very, funny. very much. I'm sorry. Very, very I'm sorry I cut you off. Thank you. That was really fantastic. Thank you so much, Thank Mrs. So Lovett, for giving us this very thorough run through. I really appreciate it. It was Anytime. wonderful.